<clears throat> what are we doing here? We're doing uh, okay, so we're doing <laughs> we're doing an episode. Hey, good morning. Uh, <laughs> today, uh, I'm Brent Abel. I'm Brent Abel. Yeah. I'm Brent Abel. No, will the real Brent Abel please stand up? Right. Come on. Ah, uh, good morning. <laughs> I'm just a stand-in. I'm a sit-in. Right. Ah. Uh, <clears throat> Hey, good morning, everybody. Jeff Jacklich here with my good friend Brent Abel, goldballhunting.com. What's going on, everybody? What Woo! is going on out there today? <laughs> don't mess up today. Don't screw up today, man. Too many good opportunities to get out there. I don't care how the weather is, whatever. It's snowing, raining, beautiful. Doesn't matter. Got to get out there and kick some butt today. The day is young. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. So today, Brenny, you are on the hot seat. I'm on the hot seat? You're on the hot seat today. Well, first I, up, I, I thought because I have um, I have something here, but that's okay. Go ahead, put me in the hot seat. All right. Well, whoa, almost lost everything there. Was that the coffee that I uh, got? I got questions oh, too. Oh god, no, no, no. Yeah, All luckily right. I didn't lose the coffee there. Uh -huh. um, okay, so um, I'm gonna put. I, I need to make sure I get the question right, so I, I got to put these on here. So, <laughs> so you're in a match. Right, you're in a tournament match. When do you decide to change tactics? When I decide I better find a different way to lose. <laughs> there you go. That's a great answer though. <laughs> that, that's exactly right. Uh, Joe, Joe, help me out here. Yeah. Uh, you know, what does yeah. that mean? Well, you know, plan B for me, first of all, is what can I do? to make the guy hit more balls in each point, first of all. What can I do to take the greatest amount of time between points without, right. without cheating, right? And, and part of that right. is, you know, I found myself in matches way back when I was trying to learn how to play and compete that, that um, if I was losing, I would start really rushing. Right. I just start rushing, and I just, you know, the guy to win a point, and I get ready to serve, and boom, here we go. Oh, there's yeah. another one. Oh, there's, boom, here we go. There's a great idea. Yeah. How can I figure out how to lose faster? Yes. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know where I ever came to that realization. I'm sure someone told me, look, you got to slow everything down. you got to make this guy, even if you don't do the thing where you're changing sides, and, you know, Jeff, you're out there kicking my butt, and we change sides, and go, God, man. Jeff, you are playing so well today. My right. God, have you thought about that? <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, we're but, not going gamesmanship right. here. Right. But not, short of that, good. but short of that, I yeah. still want you to maybe consider how well you're playing, or maybe consider, God, yeah, Brent is really, he's missing shots, and maybe he normally doesn't. So I want to extend the time that you have the opportunity to consider those things. Right. And and yet at the same time, I want to make sure that every point is I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to end the points. I'm not trying to go to a plan B that is going to end the points that I'd go, well, my plan A is normally this. I'm not really executing it today. Or for whatever reason, my plan A is just feeding into this guy's right. plan feeding, A plus. Feeding his strength, right, feeding his strength. Right, so I got to go from plan A to plan A plus, plus, plus. I've tried that before. And I'm ending up shaking hands, wait, going, hey, nice match. You know, right. <laughs> so it's got to be that that you, my plan B is to extend the time and basically see how long can I keep this guy out here? Right. You know, I, 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 put, I put it in terms like how 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 far away can I put the end of the match? Good. I need to I need to extend the match somehow and make the end of it farther away because I got to figure some stuff out here. I got to somehow. You Make, gotta, um, you got to figure out how to how to uh, turn off the uh, sound on your phone there. Right. <laughs> well, it's linked it's linked to the computer, so that's what it oh. shows there. Oh, I got okay. my phone's off. It, okay. you know, it's like, it buzzes, but it, it you know. So anyway. Um, um, but you know, I think I think what happens here is is we too often think, well, we have a a precise and distinct plan A, and then we keep this other distinct and precise plan B kind of in our pocket in case we need it. And what I've discovered is that, okay, this guy's playing out of his mind and I could be thinking, well, I don't really need to pull out plan B because I know, and, and he knows this thing is not going to, you know, because if it did keep going on for the next 90 minutes, 
Right. He'd be on the tour. Right. And, and <laughs> right. this is senior tennis. He's not on the tour. Okay. You know, so what can they do right. to sort of, you know, find a way to help him dissipate this, this hot streak? I mean, right. that's, that's kind of one plan B. But a lot of times, even if you go to a distinctly different plan B, like if you're a serving volley guy and you say, okay, this is feeding into him or I'm not executing, let's stay back. And it's not like I'm now going to stay back for the rest of the match. Let's just stay back for the next 10 minutes and let's just see what happens. And right. lots of times what happens is either you find that, wow, this plan B, this staying back thing is really what you should have been doing from, from the first point of the right. match. Or you find that, you know what, he's starting to miss some balls and even – Maybe it's not like you go from pure serve and volley to pure stay back. It could be there's a little combo of the two. But right. for the for the first few minutes, it's just stay back, and then you throw in another serve and volley, and all of a sudden you find that, hey, now it's working. And right. you don't go all the way back to pure serve and volley because there's a chance that right. you might right. have to do this thing again. <clears throat> so maybe then it's a mix. So there's really no, at least in my mind, there's no – there's no, you know, playbook thing where you go, well, if this is happening, then I got to do this, you know, right. in terms of, in terms of a different strategy and tactic. Um, it right. might be. The, ba the basic, the basic though, is um, always change a losing strategy. And, and, you know, the, the, the secret, the, the moment is deciding when to do it how many games in are you going to go with this with your your primary tactic before you decide um you know what i think i need to make a little shift here and maybe that little shift is um not necessarily changing the pattern but you know what i think i'm going to start that first that first ball into his backhand side and instead of driving it i think i'm going to go with a high roller so it, it's kind of like you know you've got to start you know you got to you got to put on the camouflage and you got to get out there in the weeds and you got to crawl through it a little bit and kind of you got to do some recon and figure out like where is this guy's threshold you know for shot making so I'm trying I'm trying to beat him to the punch with serve and volley and first return and and this and all of a sudden he's winning the zero to four you know we've talked about this in other videos you know how how long do points last and in general at any level of the game. 60 to 70% of the points are over in zero to four hits. Well, that's a general statement. There's, there's another 30% there. So there are matches that fall into another category. And that category is that five to, five to nine. And so sometimes just pushing a guy, can I, can, I, can I take the first initial two, three hits, that barrage? Can I survive that and push this guy into five and six, seven hits a point? And all of a sudden, I may find that his patience level, his, his shot tolerance is right around the five, six ball level. And all of a sudden, I'm, I can relax a little bit and go, OK, you know what? I'm just going to have to work a little harder, run a little bit more today. But if I can keep this guy out on that edge, he's going to handle this for me. So someday it could be something that simple where you know, it's not, you know, John Madden X's and O's and I got to come up with this new scientific strategy. It could be something very simple as just hanging in there and let's, let's reduce the margin a little bit, move the ball into the middle of the court a little bit and, uh, and hang. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'd, I, I got a story from, I uh, played the Atlantic senior invitational a couple of years ago, played a good guy and I don't know, quarters or something like that. And, and I was a little, little nervous cause I'm not a, uh, you know, out here in California, we're kind of raised on hard courts where if you can see your reflection on the court, you know, it's a good hard court, right. good fast, good fast court. Yeah. You know, if you can't <laughs> see your reflection, then in, you know, we, you know, we got to speed up the course, but so I'm back in Atlanta and I hadn't played a lot of clay court stuff. This guy was a good clay court guy and I'm out there and within the first four games, I mean, I'm trying, I'm thinking not only am I nervous against this guy, but, uh, I'm, I'm trying to bring that mindset that I used to have with the serve and volley and the chip and charge that any ball I saw coming at me right. was an approach shot opportunity. So that was sort of the first four games, and I kept doing it. Next thing you know is I'm down a break. He's serving at 3-1 in the first. And I just told myself, I said, I said, Brent, you can't do anything until you touch the ball three times. Not allowed. Not allowed <laughs> to do anything but just, just stay on the baseline and, 
and, and just you got to touch it three times before you even start to think about coming in. Right. <clears throat> right. And so uh, next thing you know is, you know, I'll, I, I, I play a serve and here comes this ball back and it, on a hard court, it would be an approachable, this is an opportunity. I said, no, remember the three, three ball thing, <laughs> right. you know, okay, 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 shut up. Okay. All right. Um, and I would play it and then I would get, a, here comes another one. I go, oh, this is maybe I could approach. No, no, you get a, a third ball, yeah. hit right. the third ball and boom, ball didn't come back. Oh, I won the point. All right. All let's right. serve. Let's serve. And and now here comes a here comes a return back. I'm gonna play here. Yeah. Oh, that ball didn't come back. And not that I was hitting bigger shots. I was just going right down the middle third of the court, saying, right. you know, if I have to hit the ball three times before I can even do anything, well, why go out? Why just just go down right. Broadway? Right. And you know, the <laughs> next thing I the next thing I realized was. Um, this was my plan B for that day. And, right. and, uh, so sometimes, you know, we go out in these tournament matches, even league matches, and we're, we're a little tight. We're a little nervous. Yeah. And so your plan B could be, what do I have to do to just freaking calm down? Right. And just calming down is a plan B in terms of, all right, let's really make sure after every point we are taking three or four really deep breaths. Even if the guy just double faulted and you exerted zero energy physically, right. let's make sure that we're doing it. And we're trying to take the, the anxiety level down. And there yeah. are lots of ways to do that. I mean, I can do it right. that way or I can start to go into my little gratitude thing going, God, come on, man. Right. Are you going to, is, 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 is this, is there a chance that, you know, you might make half a million dollars today in this match or, you know, if you lose, you're going to, you have to pay some guy a half a million bucks. No, 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 no. There's, there's, there's no financial thing going on here at all. <clears throat> so, um, that's, that's another way for me to kind of, uh, you know, kind of pull at that back in terms of the anxiety. Um, but there could be that, you know, what tactically and shot pattern wise, what you're doing, you're either not executing. So you got to tell yourself, all right, as you love to say, monitor and adjust. Well, I got to take that forehand and just simply go higher over the net right? for a while, right? And next thing you know, it's, boy, simply going higher over the net's working. I'm winning, I'm winning a few points right. now, right? <laughs> you know, uh, or, or it could be, hey, even if I go higher over the net, um, hey, knucklehead, you're playing into his strength and, and, th and that's what he wants. So, what could you figure out that maybe he doesn't want? And so plan B could be, well, let's probe with this. Maybe he doesn't like to run up for a dropper on right. his forehand side. Right. I don't know. If he's a run around, we've talked about this before in a match I had against a guy who loves to run around the forehand and just give it a ride. Right. Well, maybe rather than thinking I gotta get I gotta get him to hit a backhand. Let's throw it way over there to the other side. Let's make him right. run to play the forehand. Lo and behold, he doesn't hit it as well. Right. So right. I, I think I, that I think that there's there's lots of you know. And your question is, when do you know? Or I think you know. I I, I think you yeah. know when you know you've you've now found uh, a way to lose this match. Right. <laughs> I think I think what's really great though in your story though is that. Once you figured out and, and, you know, you just saw the result of just, you know, Brenny, don't change. Just can I, you got to hit three balls in. All right. Now that sounds like such a basic elementary, like really, that was, that was the genius concept that Brent came up with in the middle of the national clay courts in Atlanta. Yes. And these were well, not, these were not balls that were just missing the net. These were not, you know, right. So, these were just so I, Throw, throw it in there. Yeah. So I think, you know, the, the, a big takeaway is that, you know, the solution isn't, isn't like, again, some John Madden X's and O's, you know, Statue of Liberty play, you run down to the end zone. It's not this complicated thing. There's there subtle changes that sometimes your opponent, a lot of times, doesn't even understand why the match has switched because they're not understanding that. Their tactic, even though they're doing the same thing, you're not responding exactly the same way. 
And so they keep thinking that that's the correct tactic, but now all of a sudden it's not being uh, effective. So the other thing I think that's really dangerous, once you do change tactic and it's working and you're starting to solve the riddle that day, is, is, is don't get – don't let your pride and ego jump in and get cocky all of a sudden and go, okay, now that I've, I somehow managed to claw my way back into the first set and win the first set, I'm up 4-1 in the second now. I'm kind of just rolling here, just doing this thing. And now all of a sudden go, yeah, I think I'm going to go back to serving and volleying and blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden now I get broken and he holds serve. And all of a sudden my nerves start to jump in because, because now I thought, okay, I got this now. I can go back and be me you know what i you know my favorite way to play and i've seen more more matches you know and guilty guilty is charged myself you, you know lose matches because gosh just just say what the say what the script says just say the line jeff don't improvise <laughs> here's the new idea here's the tactic just do it until you walk up to the net shake hands get the balls go report the score then the next day, go out and figure out what the solution is that day. But I think, you know, the fact that you stayed on task, you stayed on script and didn't deviate, you, did, you saw the end goal. If I just do this, I'm going to end up with the win today. And, 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 and I didn't know that. I mean, I didn't know if I just do this that I will end up with a win. But, and you kind of have to just sort of blind faith it where now all of a sudden you have made a conscious decision to right. change something, whatever that is. Right. And you don't know if it's going to work out in the end. Right. But, but, well, but, but in, in that match, though, you were getting evidence, though, point by point, game by game, that I'm just going to stay here. And, and, right. and obviously, the guy didn't come up with a solution to what you were doing. That's right. right? And, well, I mean, what I was doing is I was making unforced errors by trying to force stuff. And, uh, uh, and, and so... But I think, I think the other thing, the other epiphany, the other, the other, uh, or, or an aha moment that I had after that match was, you know, I really do have other ways of playing this game other than thinking that I'm sort of shoved in this little kind of cubby where right. this sort of defines you. This is all you've got, Brent. All you could ever bring here is right. this kind of California style, serve and volley, right. chip and charge. You can't go further west than the, I mean, further east than the Rockies, where there might be a, a clay court because, right. <laughs> you know, it's just it's not going to work. Right. So you come away with this thing like, you know, man, there's there's more things I can do with my game I didn't know, and right. uh, it becomes uh, it becomes a great kind of feeling that there's this 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 game that we play. There's so much more to it than what we think. Oh, the, the layers are layers are endless. It is, uh, which is why it's so are. stinking fun. Yeah. It's, that's what makes it so stinking fun. It's just the layers are endless. I mean, I'm constantly learning. Um, you know, we're always sharing ideas and and learning something new. Oh my gosh, I watched this match this afternoon. Craziest thing I'd ever seen. Um, you know, so it's 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 such a incredibly fun journey. You know, here's here's another quick story. Uh, I, I really I, re I related a story about a clay court singles match, but Maya and I we we were playing the, uh, a match, a finals, a husband wife finals, and uh, we're coming in. This the guy is playing the ad court, and um, he's got a big, big forehand. And uh, so he's thumping at cross court, and and she's staying back, and uh, and then trying to my staying back on her serve, and then looking for a ball she can come in, and she's doing that. I'm serving and volleying, and I'm coming in and playing my transitional, my first volley back to the guy who's not coming in. He's staying back, right? And all we're really doing is just feeding the monster over there for his next shot. And so, you know, our thing was we kind of huddled up and said. Um, you know, what can we do differently so that, so that we don't give him, we don't keep feeding this guy's forehand. Right. So we started playing, he would return and we just start not play a dropper, but play a really short ball. Right. And, and his, and his partner wasn't really moving. She wasn't going. So we, we weren't concerned about a poach. And, and so my would take her next shot after the serve and just play it short kind of little dumper and come in and I would play my transitional volley and just play it short. And the next thing you know is balls from him 
you know, it's like a launching pad over there. They're just right, right. missiles going off the back fence. Like, like yeah, you know. I mean, we're just sort of bailing out, just watching stuff go by, and, and he's getting more and more frustrated over there. Right. Um, so that that's an example of not not where the entire match you have to change, but just one little one little subtle element, subtle change. And we went on to win the match like three and one. You know, yeah. I mean, we really, the first couple of games when we were serving to him, and then we made the change, and that was it. So, very good question today, Jeff. Very good. Yeah. Good. Thank you. All right, man. Well, listen, um, what do we want the folks to do right now? We want them to like us. We want us to share and subscribe <laughs> because it's the best thing you can do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And this is plan A. This is not plan B, man. I mean, plan A. All right, this is plan B. I mean, this is plan A. And plan B would also be like, share, and subscribe. But the other thing we want you to do is if you've got a question, you've got a comment for us, write down below in the comment section. Yep. Leave it for it. Leave it for us. Jeff and I love to read what's on your mind and respond to you. And then, of course, the other thing, if you haven't already done so, we've got a, a free video for you on how to build confidence in your game. It's free, but it is private. And the way you can get access to it is to go to goldballhunting.com. Uh, or there may be a link down below in the description area, wherever you're watching this. And just put in your first name, email address, and you'll get immediate access to that video. And, you know, that, that video is maybe a little different than, you ever, than you've ever heard about how to build confidence in your game. And Jeff and I have this belief about we all play within a skill level range. And the bigger your skill level range is, the less confidence you have from day to day when right. you go out. We, we right. don't want we, we don't want it to be a mystery every day. Where where am I going to end up today? I right. got no idea. That's right. Uh, That's know, right. I had a good night's sleep. I had a bad night's sleep. I still can't seem to know. Uh, you know, what level is going to show up today? <laughs> That's right. Well, that's right. And, and, and when you don't know that, you don't bring a lot of confidence, uh, certainly to the start of the match. And, and uh, so what we want to do with this video is help you guys build some confidence so that if this is the top of your level that uh, you play here today, but tomorrow you lay an egg, no, man. We, we, we want to start to bring the bottom level up so you become predictable <clears throat> in terms of your level of play. So guys, right down below. Uh, again, jump on that on that free private video. And as always, Jeff and I would love for you guys to get out there today, help someone else have a great day. Jeff, as always, a lot of fun. We'll do this again tomorrow. Can't wait.